welcome. Thank you for coming. This is, I know, all that's between you and the very end of the conference. Uh, we're going to try and get through all sorts of stuff very quickly. Um, those of you who tuned into the Cloud Foundry uh, Foundation webinar that um, I did uh, with Swarna, um, we'll find some of the stuff in here is the same. Basically, I'm talking about how to customize things. Uh, but Bo Yang from IBM has actually done real work uh, with this uh, platform. So I'm Troy Topnik, uh, product manager from uh, SUSE. Uh, my product is Cloud Application Platform, which is a Cloud Foundry distribution. And our team was the one who brought uh, Stratos into the foundation. So Bo, did you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, my name is Bo Yang, and um, I'm the project manager and lead in the open source development of Autoscaler service for Cloud Foundry. I also work for IBM Cloud on the developer services. Okay, and so uh, some of you are sort of uh, Stratos converts already, but some of you might be new to it and um, uh, want to just give you the basic value proposition of why you want to use Stratos, and it's because it's great. Um, a lot of people are adopting it as, as their, uh, their go-to interface to Cloud Foundry, even uh, in preference to the CLI. Uh, people are using it uh, in addition to the UIs that come with their distribution or their hosted version of Cloud Foundry. And it's just, it's proving itself really useful for a lot of people. Um, and that's why we gave it to the Cloud Foundry uh, incubator. So it is uh, an official Cloud Foundry project. Came initially, the work started a long time ago it's at uh, HPE. Uh, then it continued at SUSE, and uh, SUSE is very much into an upstream first contribution model. So that uh, came into um, Cloud Foundry. So if you want to work on a UI that has something to do with Cloud Foundry, doing it in Stratos means, it's, it means everyone in the Cloud Foundry community can benefit from it. Uh, to that end, we've made it as extensible as we can uh, and intend to make it more easily extensible as, as we go forward. Uh, because Cloud Foundry is gaining some functionality, we want to make sure that we can very quickly reflect that in the, the Stratos UI as it evolves as well. And we'll help you. So there's a really, really responsive team of developers that are working on this, uh, mostly based in Bristol, UK. Uh, and a very active Slack channel and really, really, really helpful people that want to see this adopted by a lot of people and, and having a lot of people extending it. Um, uh, we can do a number of cool things with uh, Stratos. Uh, I'll, I'll get to a little quick demo of it in a minute. Um, uh, the cool thing about Stratos, one of the many cool things is that it's uh, API driven uh, uh, UI. So. Uh, instead of being closely coupled with an element in Cloud Foundry, it actually just communicates with the API, which means you can create additional endpoints. You can have multiple uh, Cloud Foundry endpoints and multiple different kinds of endpoint types for different APIs to, to bring it into Stratos, uh, including your own APIs. If you've got your own project that you want to bring in to your single pane of glass on your Cloud Foundry environment, you can bring that API in as well. Um, but the, the demo I'm going to show in just a second is uh, more about um, how you can customize Stratos if you've got, if you're running Cloud Foundry. I'm kind of surprised IBM didn't do this on the main stage the other day. If you're running Cloud Foundry and you're using Stratos, you can make it look like it comes from your company. You can make it look like uh, it's, it's your own. And uh, these are the elements that you can actually customize there. Login screen, about, about page, um, and various views. And the way you do this right now, uh, this is just for simple customization, but it's also for uh, deeper customizations like the stuff that Bo's team has worked on, is you fork the repository, and then uh, you add your custom code in this custom source directory, which sits outside of the changes that happen as Stratos is updated. So as uh, you can keep that uh, in sync with upstream, keep pulling in the new changes, um, the, the interface between that and the custom source uh, structures should remain stable enough that, that you can get the new stuff from, from Stratos uh, without merge conflicts when you're updating and, and probably with, with good backwards compatibility too. We'll see how that goes as the project uh, evolves, but it's been a stable interface uh, for the last several months. It's a new project, so, it's, uh, so it is uh, changing. Um, this custom source folder that I'm talking about, if you have it in your, the root directory of the project when you build it, um, 
this is basically what, uh, what I just talked about. You just run uh, npm run customize in that directory. It'll bring in your customizations if you've built them properly and add them to Stratos. Uh, these are the main ones for doing simple customizations. You can stick your own favicon on. The logo that appears uh, throughout uh, the, the login screen and the about page um, there's one specifically on the top of the nav that you can change. You just have to make sure that it is within a certain, uh, within a certain range of sizes. Uh, and uh, the background image for the login, which I can show in just a sec. Um, you might have a different uh, EULA for your uh, foundation. So if you're running it yourself as a service provider, you might have uh, you know, certain terms and conditions that you want people to see. There's a EULA page. You can extend that uh, using a, a structure like this, an Angular provider. I am, I, I should apologize, I'm not an Angular developer myself, so I'm going to probably defer to Bo when, when I hit a really hard question, because you're not an Angular developer either. Um, uh, these uh, extensions are done with uh, Stratos decorators in Angular. And uh, we're going to show, I, I'm going to breeze through these pretty quickly because we've got some good stuff to show in a second. Um, but you can add, uh, uh, you can change the login screen. Uh, you can change the side nav menu. You can change, um, uh, put new tabs on some of the views uh, that you get. So application view, the, the cloud foundry view, that is a view on the foundation. Maybe we should change the name to foundation. Um, uh, the organizations page and the space view. And these other things, new actions. And this is, uh, this is what I'm going to show in just a second. So uh, to get started with the project, uh, first thing you do is you install the Angular CLI, uh, clone the repo, go into the repo, and do an NPM install. And there's a whole bunch of NPM packages that get installed. Uh, and then you start uh, prepping to make uh, your own extension. So in that custom source directory, which you'd, you'd want to make, uh, you create a new front end, and if you need to, a new back end, but that's, that's beyond the scope of what we'll talk about here. Um, generate them uh, with um, the CLI uh, for uh, Angular, and then uh, NPM run customize. Um, so this is a this is what you would do to create a new decorator to create um, an Angular component for the tab. So go into the front end app custom directory, generate a component, um, have a lot more TypeScript expertise than I do, and go in and edit the app tab example. And uh, I should mention that everything I show here, which I'm going to blaze through pretty quickly because I'm going to actually go through the the directory to to show this stuff. Uh, is all available in the examples directory of the Stratos repo. So you can go in and I'll do what I'm about to do and, uh, and see how all this stuff works. So you can poke around. Uh, this is the end result. What you see once you do that build, uh, you get an extra uh, tab that appears and uh, it comes up in the side of your uh, uh, window. So we'll, why don't we try doing this right now? I'm just going to quickly, OK. I'll actually get to that in a second. Uh, this is the command I will run to start the all-in-one uh, Docker image. The reason this is the easier way to get started is that uh, Stratos has two important components. It's got uh, the Angular front end, and it's got a Go-based back end uh, called Jetstream. Um, if you don't want to, if you want to do front end work, but you don't want to build Jetstream separately, you can just run this all in one Docker image. You'll always find it under the, uh, the Docker Hub org platform, SUSE platform group, uh, slash Stratos. And the latest uh, you can run with this command. The important thing to see here is that um, the UAA endpoint and uh, the auto reg CF URL. Uh, should be set to something that's real and working, whether that's uh, uh, a, a Bosch Lite thing locally or something running on Minikube or uh, what I'll be running is, is an instance running on, uh, on the public cloud. But it has to be a working a UAA endpoint and a working CF API endpoint. 
you go in, uh, ng serve, AOT false, and then uh, the, the code that you're working on will become available on localhost uh, 4200. That Docker image actually also exposes the vanilla, uh, whatever is current upstream, the vanilla um, a Stratos interface on port 5443. So you can switch back and forth and see, uh, see what's running. And uh, for other extension types, uh, the approach is the same. Um, uh, I'm not going to get into showing the side nav uh, additions, but again, from this example directory, uh, it's, uh, it's got all of the code examples for hello world-ish kind of uh, things. Um, another great place to look for examples of extensions is the, our downstream uh, fork for SUSE Cloud application uh, platform. So we actually have some things that are, that are not in Core Cloud Foundry. They're still all open source, but they're not generally relevant to, uh, to everyone in, who's uh, using this for Cloud Foundry. But you can go into the SUSE Stratos repository to see the difference between uh, vanilla upstream and the, the extensions that we've made are also in this custom source directory to keep them separate so we can track it. Um, Anything I say here uh, is more is, is said better in the documentation. The team has done a great job at uh, at listing uh, all the things you need to know to get started working on this. And uh, why don't we take a look at the custom source directory now? So I think this is crazy. So I'm going to run this uh, Docker image. Is that is that big enough? So you see here, um, I'm, I've pulled this earlier. I'm going to connect to uh, a demo cluster that I've got running up on EKS, uh, SUSE Cloud Application Platform. And it says starting HTTPS server at uh, 443, but we know that was actually mapped somewhere else to, um, oh, this is going to be tricky. Oops. Bear with me a second here. I'll make it bigger in a sec. So this is vanilla Stratos. This is the latest build from upstream. I can see the, um, uh, the applications that I've got uh, running on my uh, uh, demo system that I'm using for the summit. Uh, we've got the various <coughs> application views, and this is where you can add some tabs. And we can see generally what it looks like. This is the upstream version. Uh, the SUSE version has SUSE branding. Um, I'm at, logged in as an admin, so I can see administrative functions that I wouldn't be able to see uh, as a regular user. I can modify user permissions. All the things, basically, that you can generally do with the, the CLI, you can do uh, with this because you're using the API. Um, now I'm going to uh, go to the right repo, make the font bigger. And I'm going to do, uh, I don't have, uh, there's this example directory. And that has a, an example custom source directory. So uh, all of those examples that were mentioned earlier are, are listed here um, under the app directory. Uh, so you can go through those and look. What I'm going to do here is just move that into the, the root directory. So now I have that in uh, custom source. Uh, what did I say the commands were? npm run customize. And that just pulls in the customizations. And then we should be able to do uh, ng serve aot equals false. And this is going to reuse the, uh, the back end that I have running in the Docker image. And uh, uh, it's going to use that uh, for communicating if, as the API communication point with, 
the UAA and, AP and um, CF API endpoints. And once this is done, we should see this running on localhost 4200, and we'll see uh, it's not running yet. Okay, compiled successfully. I think I'm having. This looks completely different. I don't know why. This is. If anyone was at my talk in Basel, I had even worse <laughs> UI issues. Uh, projector issues. So we'll go back to the login screen where we should see that some, we've rebranded it Acme, so that's, this is your company, we could log in and see that we've changed the logos all around, not all of the logos clearly, um, but we'll see on the application view that um, we have got this example. It's basically a hello world sort of thing, and one here as well. So if you want to see how these are put together, go through that example directory. You can build it the same way. And this is, this is the flow for when you're doing development in Stratos. So these are the, the basic building blocks of, of how, we, uh, how we work in Stratos. And the, the team has done a great job of putting some examples together that, that can show you how it's done. Now, uh, those are all very simple Hello World-ish applications. Um, I'm really glad that uh, Bo's team picked this up and decided that Stratos was going to be the way they were going to build, or rebuild, I should say, a UI yeah. for App right. Autoscaler. <coughs> so uh, firstly, I'm going to um, introduce what is uh, uh, App Autoscaler project. Actually, this project uh, we uh, started two years ago as a cloud computing computer. Um, so I guess everybody knows uh, what Outscaling is doing, right? So basically what we provide is uh, um, kind of a capability so that you can um, uh, uh, adjust your uh, number of instances of your Cloud Foundry application based on the policy you define. So we support two type of uh, uh, policies. One is uh, we call it dynamic scaling. So basically you can uh, scale your application automatically based on the performance metrics like uh, CPU memory, support response time. And the other type of scaling, we call it schedule scaling. So you specify the uh, time slot. Um, uh, you can specify no matter it's a recurring or just a specific time slot, then when the time comes, then we automatically scale your application to the you know instance number that you defined. So it's um, um, actually last month, we graduated this project to be a core Cloud Foundry Foundation project. Uh, from incubating, so it's not uh, uh, not a uh, incubator anymore. Uh, there are uh, several uh, deployment uh, uh, in production, and also uh, starting from the uh, version 2.1 IBM Cloud uh, in IBM Cloud uh, uh, Foundry Enterprise environment, it's already included this uh, uh, auto service. Uh, from a user's pers perspective, we also provide uh, a command line interface uh, as a CF CLI plugin so that you can manage your policy, you can uh, see what's going on with your performance, application performance metrics, you can you know, retrieve uh, the scaling histories, you know, uh, when your application is actually scaled and what's the number of instances, some sort of this thing. So besides the CLI, actually we also have a project uh, in the Cloud Foundry community uh, to build the web GUI, right? Um, this is the one that we built previously. So it's a separate project and um, it's a standalone UI. So you can deploy using Bosch um, separately. 
um, and um, we actually doing the logging stuff uh, through the UAA, through the uh, SSO. So when, when you have a Cloud Foundry web GUI, some Slack uh, thread, uh, basically you go to this URL, and there will be a SSO, so you, you don't need to sign on again. Um, so I, I list the project repo here, so you can go, uh, go there to find that. So some of the screenshots, so it looks like uh, it's nice. So what's the reason why we actually rewrite? Um, and because the main reason is that uh, actually Stratos is now becoming the de facto you know, a web GUI for Cloud Foundry, right? So we, um, and by extending the Stratos, we got uh, quite a few benefits. Um, the first thing is that um, uh, actually, you, you don't need to you know deploy a separate UI. You don't need to go through uh, go to an, another URL to you know manage uh, the application or the same policy, right? You just uh, go to Threadless manage all. So it's a pretty uh, unified experience. And um, while the look and feel will be consistent, uh, given uh, you customize your Threadless with a different look and feel, and uh, for the auto scaler service. Uh, actually, it will use the sort of look and feel. So it's pretty similar integration, the similar look and feel uh, with a better user experience, right? And also, we can simplify the deployment, development and deployment. Um, actually, Stratos already provide a very good foundation uh, for you to build the UIs. So we don't need, um, actually, uh, it, it, it um, uh, we don't need to build a, a sort of code. Uh, and what we have focused is just the UI side and some of the extension on the back end uh, to invoke our auto service API. So it's, uh, we have less work, right? And for the deployment, we can leverage uh, Serato's uh, development model. No matter, you can you know, use different um, options to deploy. Uh, this piece of work, like uh, you can deploy as a Cloud Foundry app or deploy through Kubernetes Helm chart or Docker Compose, or even single Docker uh, image, right? So it's pretty flexible. Well, the only concern is that um, how we can involve this uh, UI separately. Um, now today, uh, as Troy de uh, described, actually you have to fork uh, the project and add what you, you want to do. It's uh, still you need to do at the code level. But, you know, um, if you, because now um, the extension goes to the customer source uh, directory and there is symboling to the core source directory of Stratos. So when you do the extension, when you, you know, if there is some change on the upstream uh, master branch of Stratos, uh, you rebase from that, um, so there will be no code conflict. So you have to, uh, you you don't need to do you know deal with the conflict. So it looks like it's not a big deal. You still have a kind of flexibility for that. I guess there will be a further you know work on how to make yeah, it more. Yeah, we got a slide a little later for that. Yeah. So um, before I go to some of the details, how we extend Cerados, uh, I want to show. Uh, what it look like uh, when uh, you have the other scalar web GUI um, in the other, uh, in the Threadless, right? So now I can, you know, uh, from the Threadless I can deploy uh, application and run the build path, and it's up and running. And then you can go to the application dashboard. Uh, what you can see is like here uh, we have, uh, you know. Uh, uh, additional tab, we call it auto screw here. This is our extension, right? Then when you click the auto screw tab, it will bring you to the configuration page. So because it's the first time, you haven't attached pol any policies, so that shows on the also uh, shows that uh, policy undefined. Then you, you can um, then uh, define the policy from the very beginning. Uh, you set up the minimal and the maximal service instance, and also um, the demand scaling policy. Uh, in this case, I want to scale based on throughput. So I define the, the scale in policy. It basically means that uh, if the average throughput is less than 10 for 60 seconds, I, I remove one instance. And uh, cooldown uh, one minute basically means that uh, after I scale down, uh, I will wait at least uh, one minute before the next uh, scaling action kick in. 
I also define another policy for secure art, right? Um, so then you can specify the you know uh, uh, schedules for this type of scaling. Uh, in this case, I specify uh, you know uh, recurring scaling. Basically, mean that uh, I, I will scale at least uh, you know to um, five instances uh, during every uh, during you know 10 p.m. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And uh, you can also add uh, uh, specific dates for uh, scheduled scaling policy. Okay, then you save the policy. The uh, all scheduled service will retrieve the policy and start to clarify the you know your performance metrics, and then uh, trigger scaling action. So then you go to the you know uh, metrics page. You will see uh, the throughput because you define the demand scaling based on throughput. Uh, let's uh, give some load to the application, and then you can see the throughput goes up, and it's uh, up to the upper threshold. So after uh, some time, uh, there will be a scaling action uh, showing that your application instance scale from one instance to two. Uh, and it will continue to go out uh, if uh, still you still load the application. Then I um, um, I stop the uh, um, the benchmark uh, client, so uh, uh, there is no request going to application. Then your application will scale uh, in to uh, the initial instance. That is one instance. Uh, if you check the scaling history, scaling events, then basically it shows that uh, uh, first they grows from one to two, and two to three, and then they shrink from three, uh, eventually to one instance. So this is the um, very quick demonstration. Uh, let's see, where is the? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay. Where did it go? No. Do that. How did we lose that? I need just close. Did you close that? I don't think this is. I think we can work with this. Yeah. Sorry about this, folks. Why don't we do questions now? <laughs> <laughs> so the next is uh, I will, you know, go a little bit of details on uh, how we extend that, how we implement this. Wrong, wrong. Give me a second. Is that, that's already, is that the wrong one? This is the wrong one. Oh. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So um, the Sudatos actually have a, a front end, uh, it's Angular based, and uh, the back end is uh, written in Go language. So you can extend both the front end and back end. Uh, so actually, Troy um, focus on how to extend from the front end, right? Yeah. So actually, there will be um, for the back end that we call it uh, Jet Stream. Uh, it's basically a proxy. Um, so it received a HTTP request from the front end and doing some processing and forward to the back end uh, CF endpoint. Uh, let's first uh, say how we are extending the you know back end first. So. Um, uh, the Jetstream um, uh, proxy have the plugin interface. So if you want to extend the backend, you just implement the plugin interface. So there will be um, different things you can extend. You can add another middleware uh, to 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 handle your uh, HTTP request. You can you can add another endpoint. You can also um, uh, 
to customize your routing for your uh, for, for your HTTP request from the front end. In the other particular case, actually, uh, we don't need uh, the, uh, the former one. We, what, we, uh, what we did is actually we extend the routing uh, kind of things. Basically, we, re we get the HTTP request from the front end. We, you know, uh, just uh, uh, compose the right uh, API endpoint for the auto service at the back end. And we proxy that uh, to the backend. It's pretty easy. And uh, after you extend this uh, plugin, implement this plugin interface, what do you need is just add this plugin uh, to the list so that it can be initialized. So the next is um, uh, extend, you know, the front end. So um, what we did is uh, go through the same way that uh, Troy described. Uh, create the customer source uh, directory. And you know, uh, uh, use the uh, Angular uh, command lines to generate the module and uh, customer module and the component, and then using the npm uh, run customize to actually link the customer source directory to the Threadless core source directory. Um, and then what we do is, um, you know, decorate the component uh, so that Thread know that it's actually. Uh, ex extension of the application tab, right? Um, the here in the scene is um, uh, we have kind of you know uh, requirements uh, to detect whether the autoscaler is available because uh, the threads can manage multiple Cloudflare uh, environments. So some of the Cloudflare environments may may not have autoscaler service. So we need a way. Um, to detect whether it's available, and uh, if it's not, then we will not show the tab. What we did is um, we add an action, um, and this is a health check. And and uh, for these actions, we have the uh, you know ngrx effect uh, to retrieve uh, the health information from the backend to detect the availability. If it is successful, successful, then we push the li uh, tab list to the tab to the list so that it will show up. If it is not, then we just skip. So that is um, then the next how we are going to show uh, render the page for uh, for auto scale. I'm going to you know uh, show a very you know simple case how we render the policy. Um, so here, what we do is firstly uh, we create action uh, for the autoscaler policy service, so that we can uh, fetch the autoscaler policy from the backend, and then we register uh, 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 an effect uh, to listen on this action. And uh, so this effect is actually fetch the uh, policy and store that to the state tree, so that you can uh, the front end can 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 get the policies from using this entity tree entity key. This group here. The next, we well, uh, what we do is actually, you know, we we define a uh, observable variable uh, for the app, app autoscaler policy service, um, and uh, and in the uh, DOM tree, uh, when the DOM tree is re rendered in the browser, uh, and this uh, observable ver variable is actually no oh, no, sorry. Is requested, then if you trigger, it will trigger the uh, app auto policy service, the action uh, to retrieve the policy, and um, then we, uh, the front end we can get that uh, policy from the state tree and, and then render the whole page. So this is this are the basic ideas uh, how we are extending that, uh, how we render the policies uh, in the uh, application auto scaler tab. So there are many others, right? Uh, we follow the same way to extend. So you can get more details of the code. Actually, we push the code uh, not not to our own, you know, repository. We push the code to the autoscaler branch of Stratos. So if you want uh, the details, just go there um, to see to see all the code. Yeah. So I'll wrap it up really quick. I know we're a little bit over time. Sorry about that. Um, uh, we are working on a way to uh, make it so that extensions can be published uh, in separate repositories so that we have a proper plugin mechanism so that we don't have to do this thing with the custom source. It works pretty well right now, but long-term plan, we want people to be able to maintain uh, extensions for Stratos completely separately. Um, and um, we just want to do that because it's going to make it easier for users to add and subtract components and easier for maintainers to keep their code separate. 
Um, we want to improve the back-end plug-in mechanism. We want to uh, improve and extend the documentation. Uh, Neil, the project lead, wrote that line item. I think his docs are pretty great, uh, but he, he's always looking for continuous improvement on those. Um, and also making it easy, just like when you uh, create a component with the, uh, the Angular CLI, to make, make something that will make a, a Stratos-specific, uh, to generate a skeleton for a Stratos-specific extension. That's, um, and then so one of these things, the availability check that, that Bo was talking about, looking to see if there was an app autoscaler to talk to, there's probably something internal with that. So I gotta check with Neil if maybe there is something like that. If there isn't, we'll make sure it gets added. So thank you very much for coming. <laughs>